Perfect. So, uh, my special guest who I, I just asked this morning if he wanted to hop on is Turel or Dylan. Um, do you want to kind of briefly say who you are if people aren't familiar with who you are? Yeah. Um, so that my name's Dylan. Uh, I go by uh, Turl online. Um, but I am a moderator of the Assassin's Creed subreddit. Uh, and I'm also a member of the Mentors Guild. Um, so the Mentors Guild is a Ubisoft aff affiliate program. And, um, you know, it's a collection of different community members who have like different specializations. Um, and uh, we're, you know, we have um, contact with Ubisoft and we'll get previews of things and um, uh, be able to share those things with the community. And we're able to um, take things from community back to the dev team. So um, that's just kind of a brief thing on that. But yeah. Awesome. Thanks for hopping on, man. Yeah. You, yeah. Uh, I, the main reason I wanted to reach out to you was, well, first off, you are making more YouTube videos. So uh, I'll post your YouTube links in there for people to check out. Your <laughs> you know, if you look at my Twitter profile, you'll see I specifically put, I am not a YouTuber. <laughs> well, <laughs> We uh, we'll at least try our best to see if we can get you to a thousand. So at least your the videos <laughs> you do get get you something. But um, I want yeah, mainly so, because um, go ahead. Uh, no, you go ahead. Uh, what I was gonna say was is uh, like you are a long time Assassin's Creed fan. Me and you have had conversations privately in the past about Assassin's Creed, and I kind of wanted to just briefly kind of get your impression because you got to play the same demo that i did and when i was talking to Joe raptor about this i noticed that we had completely different experiences so i kind of wanted to see if you wanted to kind of briefly talk about what your experience was in the demo sure um so yeah so some some reference for everybody i've been playing these games Ava. since like the beginning <laughs> since day one i'm a very big fan of the Ezio trilogy um, uh, I, you know, I'm a fan of the classic style of AC. Um, I was actually a pretty big fan of Origins outside of its story. Um, Odyssey has a lot of issues. It's not really a game that I would consider playing like again. Mm -hmm. Um, but I was just watching your stream and you said something like, this feels like a culmination of Origins and Odyssey. A little and, bit. And yeah, I think I agree with that. Right. And. I, I would say it's it's a refinement. Yes. Like it has all of the same types of elements and features and like gameplay, generally speaking. Um, but it's just so much more smartly like crafted and mm -hmm. put together. Like the general structure of how there's like really only one main quest line and those are broken up into chapters. Um, like it just makes it so much easier to like digest and focus on what's considered the main content. And then the side stuff is like pretty unique each time you find something and it's not necessarily like, um, I don't know if I'd call it optional, but it doesn't feel like I have to grind out a bunch of this stuff to be able to reach the next location. We'll see how that goes when it comes mm -hmm. out, but. Yeah. Um, Even from like a, a story perspective, because uh, the biggest memory I have of Odyssey from a story perspective is the beginning spoilers. Uh, you should have probably played it by now. So whatever is like uh, when, when you discover that you're headed to like kill your dad at the beginning, like the and then the cutscene happens oh, yeah. and shows. And like I remember my wife was watching me play that scene and she goes. Let me guess what you have to like, you're going to go kill your dad or something like very sarcastically. And in that <laughs> moment, I realized I was like, oh, OK, maybe this <laughs> I thought this is going to be pretty good. But uh, it kind of was a little underwhelming in terms of story. But the demo we played for Valhalla, I I, I know it's just one storyline and I'm not trying to be over hyped or anything like that, but like. I immediately got kind of attached to the Ragnar brothers. It's like a character. It's like um, I was pretty impressed with like those characters and the characters you met in the entire story itself. Did, 
did you find that similarly or were did you find yourself a little um did you feel differently about this demo story no i i'd say the same um i actually liked ivar so much that i put together a video of just like his scenes because oh, he's yeah. just so interesting to watch and then what's really cool was so he's kind of comes across as like this this kind of psycho who's kind of sadistic mm -hmm. um but uh he's like pretty washed up but by the end you like he you know he sits down with you and you have a beer and he just kind of like mm -hmm. he kind of he he kind of goes pretty deep on how he feels about his relationship with his brother and you know how he can actually feels like he can make a friend with avor and um you know and how they're him and his brother are are um kind of falling apart yeah uh, but he really wants to be able to rekindle that again so it, it, i i in yeah like you said this was just you know one chapter but it it feel, feels really nice to be able to see like you know and not necessarily an arc in a character but something that is a little more complex than just a falling of the plot yeah like i kind of like that structure because it's it, there is the chapter story and then there's this continued story like i want i when we were done with the demo i wanted to go to the next chapter because like i'm like oh there's gonna be a moment where i'm either gonna have to choose between sigurd or the brothers or i don't know what these are i don't have those answers but i want to know them <laughs> you know like uh that i uh i was pretty pretty impressed with how excited i got playing and listening to this story um was there so um i i was just trying to i actually had a few technical difficulties at first not because of the game but because of things on my end but i didn't get to do too many like mysteries or things on the nature did you go do a lot of exploring uh when you um i didn't do a ton because i was actually trying to capture a bunch of like stealth gameplay okay. so i went and like found areas where i could kind of stealth around but i did do some and i also did so there was a, se a similar session in july i think it was i also did for about four hours so i did a little more exploring there okay. um but uh like from what i have seen is like everything every little at least like some of the mysteries and stuff is a little different right like it's not necessarily just some fetch quest mm -hmm. um sometimes you're helping people sometimes they're um like uh telling some sort of story sometimes it's goofy um and you know sometimes they're like they're super rewarding and then sometimes they're just like you get maybe a, it's just like a fun little thing that gives you a little xp like for example one of them was avor walks up to these mushrooms and i guess she eats them or something and she uh she's just nailing people yeah. on the boat. <laughs> i know i i didn't want to interrupt you but that was like one of my me and the demoist's favorite uh, clip right there was when i i wanted to see what the physics would do if I just... uh, okay yeah <laughs> um but yes yeah, so back to a4 she was she ate some mushrooms and then she basically had a trip where these seals had they kind of directed you to figure out this this very simple puzzle mm -hmm. and like it didn't really amount to anything like you just kind of solved it and then the trip was over but it was still just kind of like something different and something memorable in it and um like maybe that doesn't necessarily fit into like like the fantasy of the of assassin's creed or whatever or maybe it's a little odd for the world but it, it's it's a nice way to make something interesting and take advantage of like this this setting that mm -hmm. i feel like can have a lot of strangeness in it um, yeah which i think is cool yeah i um what i like so at least the gameplay that like we're about to see is i kind of was just heading to see like oh what if i go track down this piece of wealth or whatever and like there was these roman ruins and it act, instead of just like running up to a chest and looting it and then getting back on your ship and like going to the like checkpoint which is what i was kind of concerned about uh was like this idea of like because it's a viking game and you're looting and like it's like move checkpoint check checkbox 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 um there was actually kind of a puzzleness to this area like 
the 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 chest wasn't just there like you had to like figure out how to get up there there was like you had to shoot arrows and lower something for you to get to the right spot and uh i kind of miss that like that just kind of reminded me of like classic assassin's creed games where you kind of had to think a little bit before you went and did something and yeah uh, i mean that's something uh that's something darby actually talked about was mm -hmm. in a recent interview i think he had with access the animus you guys should all check that out it's a really yeah. great interview marco asked a lot of questions that aren't pretty typical um but he kind of he asks Darby's like, "What's your favorite thing from this game?" And he's like, "Well, I'm, what I'm really proud of is as a team, we were able to kind of what he thinks perfect kind of the exploration loop. So that's mm -hmm. like you know, um, you have a main quest, but maybe along the way you you have something that comes across your path, or maybe you seek it out. But once you get there, it, like you said, it's not just I find loot, I open it, done right. Like there's always something." to interact with before or some sort of puzzle to fall solve or something like that which mm -hmm. um or there's some sort of thing to raid or house to open and i think that is is going to feel really nice in the in in a in a great change of pace of like what we expect from kind of collect-a-thon open world stuff yeah i still have the concern that it's like gonna still have that same issues of like checkbox like like yeah. check this off the box and clearing the map which can be kind of fun you know like it can be relaxing but it's still kind of mindless so yeah. maybe this solves that maybe it doesn't but uh it might i, I would say prolong and improve yeah i yeah. i think it might prolong like my instincts are like for example right there i just discovered oh yeah that's can, pretty like, cool though like isn't that yeah. isn't that great that you're like you're having to do more than just like go get the thing yeah and now all of a sudden i'm in the new area and there's some bad guys for me to take up but like i definitely feel like w hopefully there's not like a pattern that you pick up where you're like oh now i'm just like using odin sight trying to find red dots and shoot all of them and then i'll get there so i guess it's kind of up to the player i like that they put the features in so the player can play that way and be curious there's definitely going to be other players out there who um just kind of brute force everything and uh they might be yeah. able to do that but <laughs> i wouldn't advise yeah. that <laughs> yeah but even then like some of the stuff is like you can't you can't brute force it like i yeah. remember in one of my previous ones like to open the door you have to go find the window to mm -hmm. shoot through to like break the lock on the other side of the door like it's a house yeah. and so mm -hmm. you can see through the window but you can't go through it and the front door is locked so you have to shoot it mm -hmm. and you can't just like brute force your way through something like that so no. you know i think there's definitely going to be the people that like create as make this game as efficient as possible yeah. but that's not really like the point I, no. I think they were going for. <laughs> You're about to watch me die horribly to a much bigger... I, I didn't come across any of these guys. There's one of them on the map. He was a Oh, star. really? Yeah, he threw a bomb at me, killed me pretty much instantly. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, that's... Oh. <laughs> he, the, the zealots are kind of mentioned. They they definitely feel like um, mercenaries, but also the... Um, the those guys... Yeah, the exactly. And, From um, Origin, yeah. Yeah they definitely have that like one and done kind of uh, vibe instead of these just constantly repetitive mercenaries chasing you around like yeah that was one of my big issues with odyssey was like that revolving door of mercenaries that were like they all were randomized but they all felt the same and they had that like problem of they could beeline to your position basically yeah like they would know exactly where you are as soon as you like hit the level high enough for them to start coming yeah. out yeah. One thing I just did, which I think super interesting, the thing I just collected before I died was a Roman artifact. And there's a building. Did you get a chance to check him out? You can turn in Roman artifacts. And he, I think he gives you visual customizations for the settlement. Oh, but it sweet. ties in to yeah. your... Um, to your uh, there's some parkour on a tree right here for those of you. <laughs> Although it's not true. Oh, there you go. Classic parkour. I was just trying to see... Amazing. Can I, can I do some <laughs> AC3 stuff or not? Um, but um, you, you did a video about the abandoned 
um, Hidden Ones headquarters. And mm -hmm. there's, I think that that's kind of a lore-ish area is like this tie to the Romans and their connections to all this stuff. And with the fact that they're, um, see, it's not easy to find this stuff. Like, I'm like, how do I get over there? Like, I'm spending a moment trying to be like, okay, maybe I need to figure out how to get up there. Yeah, you um, got to find the path. Yeah, this is nice. This is cool. But, um, but yeah, I'm just curious, like. I, I'm pretty interested in that part of the game too. Is like how the Roman artifacts and connections to all the uh, Assassin's Creed lore there is with all these uh, ruins around that you collect. Yeah, I, I that so that area is super juicy in lore and like um, I, I'm they've done a good job at Ubisoft of marketing this as a Vikings game, right? Mm -hmm. they've not done a great job of exciting someone who's more interested in the assassin's creed stuff mm -hmm. but that being said i think there is a lot of stuff being held back about the more assassin's creed elements and i think that's partially on purpose because they just want people that are interested in it to go find it right mm -hmm. and i i think that like my my guess is is that fans of the you know that are big fans of the story and the saga and the lore are going to be pretty satisfied with you know everything that's going on in this game yeah i think there's um i think the the hidden ones that are returning to what is an abandoned uh area is i think their motivations are a little more hidden than we totally understand mm -hmm. um i think that like it's going to be really cool to see how like uh, what how the roman influence you know really affected these lands and how um the templars were a, a part of that uh you know a part of the roman empire Michael and now they're dollars. being now they've you know so it, it, maybe they've returned again in a kind of a different so capacity um so yeah i'm really i really want to learn more about the roman Oh, like the the you know the time of the of the Roman Empire in the uh, within Britannia here. Yeah, for sure. It the uh, it has to play a pretty large role considering there's this many ruins and things. So um, there's definitely gonna be a lot of I think a lot of mysteries surrounded that. Yeah, like for example, it just it's been like what five seven minutes and now I'm just now entering like an area where I can finally like loot something or get some sort of reward and it just took a little bit to kind of assess the area around it and go how do i how do i figure this out and even here it's like oh wait do i just smash this it's like yep there you so, go so what what did you end up doing did you just have to open the front door uh no if you here i can rewind it hopefully um actually i can't figure that out i, I kind of was like not I was yeah. half paying attention. I had to so shoot to like... from behind and through. There was like a, a line straight to the back of the door from the outside where I had to shoot an arrow yeah. to unlock the see, door, I, which see, seems I to could, be a pretty so common. Like, this is pretty awesome, but like I could see that becoming that same thing of like go to go to place, shoot arrow through window to get the door. So maybe, you know, hopefully it, At least there's enough there, variation in that, order but... to get to the spot though here's what was interesting is in order to get to the spot to shoot the arrow i had to do some like parkour and figure out how to get to that spot right so like oh yeah you had to climb to the top of the building and either use ropes to get to uh one platform and then to another platform i kind of i think i accidentally cheesed it and i jumped straight from the roof to the like final platform um i didn't do that on purpose i didn't notice that but um until just now but yeah i i feel like th it could get repetitive with the shoot arrow through stuff but at least there's some sort of like precursor to that where you kind of have to figure out how to get there in the first place and uh get to the point where you shoot the arrow i'm definitely hoping that there's you're right like that there's more than just shoot arrows through stuff but um it's better than what yeah. Odyssey had. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and, and <laughs> I, I, I kind of see this as like a. I don't know if you played Breath of the Wild, but they, you know, they have the the shrines around the world, and those are 
obviously a lot more complex than kind of these basic shoot arrow through window thing. But yeah. I think that you're going to get kind of a similar feel or a similar loop in like in in the idea of that of if that of finding wealth or finding a mystery can often be a lot times more than just just finding it like it's the, the experience is not just finding the loot it's mm -hmm. it's the whole thing surrounding it which yeah again is really cool i think i did this one too yeah you have to shoot the uh the thing at the top here yeah to drop yeah, the weight on. yep right there and then you're like oh okay that's how yeah. i get into there um yeah for those of you who just joined, I see a couple of people asking who I'm talking to. I'm talking to Turel or Dylan. He's a uh, Reddit moderator for the Assassin's Creed official subreddit. He is a longtime fan and member of the Mentors Guild. And uh, he's just uh, generous enough with his time to come join me and answer and talk a little bit about his experience. Because, I don't know, I, I, I just, I respect... Uh, your feelings on it, I feel like you have a very um, good, healthy outlook on Assassin's Creed games. And so... Um... <laughs> Maybe that's just what I project to everyone else. I don't know if I have a healthy outlook. <laughs> no, but, uh, but uh, um, I do have to leave here soon, so I'll just kind no of problem. wrap up with my like, journal thoughts. I wouldn't sleep on this game. Like, I think there is... A lot they haven't shown mm -hmm. on partially on purpose and yeah. that there is a lot to like like i said the structure and the way things are organized all kind of add, especially in the story there's a lot of great story stuff all of that really adds up to what i think is a really um like cohesive and um uh, interesting experience that like wants you to you know to engage with it and come back like whether it's having these stories in these kind of chapters or these uh exploration uh you know uh areas where you're kind of solving these little mini puzzles um or even like i didn't even get to talk about this but the animus anomalies have really uh really juicy narrative rewards at the end and so if you're a fan of the truth videos from assassin's creed 2 you'll get something that is uh pretty similar to that i'd say so yeah um yeah I, I you know uh this is not necessarily like a return to form for the classic ac fans or anything like that like if you're not a big fan or if you really really dislike the previous two entries i don't know if this game is gonna do it for you but i still think it's the it'll probably be the best version of these three if that makes yes. sense. yes yeah i totally agree with that it's definitely an improvement and a refinement like you had said earlier on origins and odyssey and i think it it serves a lot of different kinds of fans of the assassin's creed franchise um but yeah if you're if you're uh, uh like a brotherhood uh religious follower uh it might not be exactly that type of game for you but still maybe check it out if you if you wanted to kind of reboot the franchise for yourself at all yeah and i mean and i mean and, and and they haven't talked a lot about story and lore but like like i said man like don't don't sleep on it like there's mm -hmm. i think there's a lot there's a lot there that is going to pique the interest of mm -hmm. the classic band, so. all right well cool. thanks jordan i gotta go no problem. Uh, Thank really you for hopping on. I'll chat at you yeah, later. Yeah, love, love to come back. Uh, good luck with the rest of the stream. No problem. See you, man. Thank you.